Wherever you may be on this day, I am happy and pleased to offer you to our service, welcome you to our service of evening prayer. I'm Jim Gary. I'm one of the honorary associates at the Church of the Ascension, located in London, Ontario. In Canada today is Thanksgiving Day. To all who are celebrating on this day, I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. I know some like to have their big meal on the Sunday of Thanksgiving. We'll be having our big meal uh, later on this day. Uh, it's often a day that we're traveling and visiting with family. But of course, this is a weekend that we've been told it's better to stay at home. So we were able this morning to have a nice Zoom conference with our children and grandchildren, spread as they are from Quebec to British Columbia. I'll be speaking a little bit more about Thanksgiving in our meditation time. To say now that this is also observed in many places as Columbus Day, also known as Discoverer's Day, or Feliz, uh, excuse me, the Dia de la Raza, uh, all acknowledging that in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and he happened upon an island, probably San Salvador, which he claimed to have discovered, even though people were already living there. Uh, a part of uh, acknowledge this as Dia de la Raza is that it marks the beginning of European colonial imperialism in North and South America. In 1609, the children's rhyme, Three Blind Mice, was published in London, England. In 1810, in Germany, the first Oktoberfest was celebrated in Munich. Actually, a giant royal wedding reception to which the public was invited. The people enjoyed it so much, they said, we should get together like this every year in October. In 1823, Charles Mackintosh of Scotland began selling raincoats that became known as Max. I looked at the weather radar before beginning outside today. It doesn't look as if rain's going to be coming in until 9 or 9.30, but it has that feeling already. We'll just have to wait and see. The Italian opera singer Luciana Pavarotti was born on this day, October the 12th, in 1935, in Modena, Italy. In 1957, Canadian Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his work in helping to create the first United Nations peacekeeping force and for defusing the 1956 Suez Crisis. In 1971, the rock musical Jesus Christ Superstar debuted on Broadway. And finally, in 1997, popular singer John Denver died in a private airplane accident. That's a little bit of this day, Thanksgiving Day, for us here in Canada. Let's now begin our prayers. O oh Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O oh Son of God, O oh giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. This evening, for our psalm, we will be using Psalm 4. Answer me when I call to you, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices, and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. 
you have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep, for only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And our psalm prayer. Faithful defender, do not let our hearts be troubled, but fill us with such confidence and joy that we may sleep in peace and rise in your light through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. For our scripture this evening, we will be reading the seventh, and that is the last chapter from the prophecy of Micah. Uh, for the next few days after today, we will be reading from the prophecy of Jonah, a delightful book and one of my favorites. But now let us complete our reading in Micah. I will be reading verses 1 to 7, uh, from chapter 7, verses 1 to 7 and 18 to 20. Woe is me, for I have become like one who, after the summer fruit has been gathered and the vintage has been gleaned, find no cluster to eat. There is no first ripe fig for which I hunger. The faithful have disappeared from the land, and there is no one left who is upright. They all lie and wait for blood, and they will hunt each other with nets. Their hands are skilled to do evil. The official and the judge ask for a bribe, and the powerful dictate what they desire. Thus they pervert justice. The best of them is like a briar, the most upright of them a thorn hedge. The day of their sentinels, of their punishments, has come. Now their confusion is at hand. Put no trust in a friend. Have no confidence in a loved one. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your embrace. For the son treats the father with contempt. The daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies are members of your own household. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. And then there are verses we are skipping that speak of penitence and trust in God. A prophecy of a time of respiration, restoration, a day for the building of your walls. In that day, the boundary will be far extended. And then we go to verse 18, God's compassion and steadfast love. Who is like, who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of your possession? He does not retain his anger forever, because he delights in showing clemency. He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast out all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and unswerving loyalty to Abraham, as you have sworn to our ancestors from the days of old. And this reading is from the word of the prophet Micah, speaking the word of the Lord. Micah has been a fascinating read. We have uh, seen about a people who use false weights and measures, who subverted justice, who were at war within themselves, in which family love had disappeared, in, in which the poor were trampled underfoot, and yet God continues to challenge them to turn to a better way. And God gives that promise, if you will do so, I will be with you to hold you, to support you, to bless you. That becomes the message of Micah, uh, a message worth considering in our time, as we see around us much subversion of the will of God. We see many cases of injustice. We see that righteousness is often gone from the people. And the warning words of the prophet Micah Micah to the people of his time are warning words to us yet today. And on this Thanksgiving Day, as we consider and enumerate our blessings, it is worth our thinking of the many ways that God has blessed us, including blessing us with forgiveness. Thanksgiving in Canada is truly a very old custom and tradition. 
1578, the English explorer Martin Frobisher and his crew gave thanks, and a communion, that is a Eucharist, was observed either on land at Frobisher Bay, which had been named by Frobisher after himself, or in the uh, aboard a ship that was anchored there in what is present-day Nunavut. The explorers dined on salt beef, biscuits, and mushy peas, and gave thanks through the Eucharist for their safe arrival in this new world and this new land, as I said, the area that is now known as Nunavut. And that is now accepted by historians as the first Canadian Thanksgiving, fully 43 years before the first American Thanksgiving at Plymouth Rock. 48 years later, on November 14th of 1606, inhabitants of New France under Samuel de Champlain held huge feasts of Thanksgiving between the local Micmac and the French. And though not known at that time by the settlers, the cranberries that they included as a part of their feast are rich in vitamin C and is credit, is credited with hap, helping to avoid scurvy. The na likely uh, neighboring Micmac, likely they did introduce the French to these cranberries, or as the French chose to call them, petite pomme rouge, little red apples. The foods that are associated with our traditional Thanksgiving, such as North American turkey, squash, and, and pumpkin, especially pumpkin pie, were introduced to the citizens in Halifax in the 1750s by United Empire Loyalists who had made their way north uh, into Canada. And this tradition continued to spread then to all parts of Canada. Today, Canadian Thanksgiving is celebrated on the second Monday of October every year, and it was so declared to be just on January 31st, 1957. Those of you who remember before that time may re remember that it was sometimes celebrated in October, sometimes in November. It was somewhat local or provincial custom. Before this, Thanksgiving in Canada had been held sporadically, often coinciding with other major festivals. For example, in 1879, Thanksgiving was officially declared a national holiday to be held on November 6th. So it almost has become a movable feast for us, but very much a feast as we give thanks for the many fine gifts that are ours. And thanks for the way that God has richly blessed us. We turn again now to our prayers. The Colic for Harvest Thanksgiving. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for your, all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well. That the whole human family, today and in generations to come, may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a, a prayer of, of thanksgiving, in which we especially remember those who, who work the fields and grow the crops for us. God, our Creator, you have ordered seed time and harvest, sunshine and rain, Give to all who work the land fair compensation for the work of their hands. Grant that the people of this and every nation may give thanks to you for food, drink, and all that sustains life, that we may use with care the land and the water from which these good things come, and that we may honor the laborers who produce them. And these things we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on doing your will, and that freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And now I invite you in this moment of silence to offer your own prayers of thanksgiving. And now in the 
language and form of your choosing, will you join me as we pray those better words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst us and remain with us and those we love and those we would pray for now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.